Hello everyone and welcome to our interview with Greg Saint, event group event director at Clarion Gaming, who oversees uh, ICE Asia. Hi Greg. Yeah, hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm well, thanks, how are you? Yeah, very good, very good and hello to everyone who's listening. Um, we're here to talk about uh, ICE Asia and the, the digital version. Uh, so our first question for you, Greg, is uh, what can we expect from ICE Asia Digital and what should we look out for in terms of uh, themes, topics and speakers? Yeah, so um, I think um, in terms of ICE Asia Digital, you should um, look for it to be um, an event in the same way that you would if you were considering going to a physical event. So one of the main things we look to do for all our, our digital events is really look at obviously matching the right um, buyers with um, sponsors, speakers, regulators, anyone that's in that normal mix that you'd expect to see at a gaming show. And really obviously um, with the accent on the times we find ourselves in now. So the, uh, the fundamentals around um, ICE Asia Digital will be to really try and give those businesses on the operator and uh, supplier side insight into um, what they need to be looking at and focusing on to um, open up businesses again and how we move forward. So I think that would be the overall theme of, um, of our um, digital conference. Mm -hmm. uh, how has Clarion found its uh, virtual events have gone so far? Because obviously you had the, the ICE North America uh, event already. Yeah, so um, vir virtual events uh, are something that we've, we've looked at uh, previously. Um, obviously, we've got a um, digital department and publishing that, that do what you would call uh, online digital products. Normally, um, slightly less um, involved than a, a digital week, um, so webinars and um, website activities. But really, we've drawn on some of that experience that we had to obviously expand it across an event theme. Um, in terms of what we've, um, we've looked to do, is really to focus down on... Um, doing maybe five or six things right within the digital forum. I mean, it's one of those mediums where there's 101 ways you could um, interact and display. But really, we're looking for something that actually um, is robust in the first instant and really um, enables people to connect and get to the information and the context they, they need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, in terms of your kind of the, the, anything previous uh, you've done virtually and, and, and ICE North America itself, uh, are there any sort of lessons or, or early takeaway points and anything that worked particularly well or anything you'll be doing uh, somewhat differently for ICE Asia? Well, I think, um, I think the takeaway points um, that, that we found worked well is obviously um, realise what you can do within the, the sphere of what your day-to-day -day activities are obviously draw on um, organizational skills of marketing your sales teams but equally to realize where you need help from the right partners so we've partnered um, on our digital uh, events uh, first one was ice north america as you say with smart digital for our content who is a partner that we use at ice london which um, really um, ensures that you're getting your content in the style that you want in the visual and audio formats that you want. And then the other thing that we wanted to incorporate was a, a platform for interaction. So that's for um, contact exchanges as well as um, networking facilities. And that's that we've done that through um, a process called Swap Card. And that's really quite a neat tool to um, allow people to reach out, be contacted if they want to, and be able not to be contacted. In exactly as you would have in if you were trying to um, do a meeting on site or or pre a, a live event, I think that's very very important and um, that's, that's put us in good stead. So, Ice North America, we we had uh, just over four thousand people register, and obviously the event itself would have been a new event in, in the live format. And um, we're noticing that we're getting um, high returns. So. Um, if you if you compare those registrations to pre-registrations to an event, we're probably coming in at sort of 60, 65% return, which is which is a lot of people who are obviously online at any one time, um, dipping in and out of contact and uh, content. So very pleased so far. Um, looking for the same for Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like there's, there's a lot to look forward to with this event. Um, a final question to, to end on, uh, looking to the future. Uh, do you think um, we'll see more virtual events like this, given their success, or do you think it'll be kind of be um, 
normal service will res resume and, and we will be back to business as usual when we can actually go to these events again. I think I think you will uh, continue to see digital um, offerings, and um, I think they'll probably to be twofold, depending on on the amount of information and change that's generated in in any particular industry or gaming here, but within um, regional aspects as well. Um, things are moving at different rates with different product groups within gaming at different places in the world. But I, I do believe that. Um, they're a, they're a great way to um, give more of a sort of 365 uh, potential for both sets of customers, as well as uh, to utilize digital within the live um, environment. Um, I think you'll see um, that being um, more oftenly used uh, because especially when you look at events which are stretched across the globe, not everyone can come every year and that's absolutely fine to a line event. But if you can identify those people that maybe um, can't attend, then you may be able to offer them some virtual uh, offering during the live event itself. I think some of those um, products would need to be a little bit more advanced than what we're currently using to, to give the full live experience. Not to say that what we're using isn't absolutely fine for the job it needs to do at the moment. But yeah, there's that's where I think you can with more time, develop more technology, which can make some of those things happen. Um, the future is going to be out there. You know, obviously, there's lots of future uh, technology in gaming anyway. So it'd be really interesting to see how that gets woven into events. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly an exciting time. Sounds, sounds promising. Uh, thanks very much for your time, Greg. Thank you, Tim. All the best.